I'm going to go through the process of installing Octave and also Arduino support for Octave. So first of all, I'm going to just go to download Octave and uh, that's going to give me a couple different options. I'm on Windows and I'm just going to select the latest 64-bit uh, installer. So that's going to download 304 uh, megabytes. I'll go ahead and pause it right here and when that's done, we'll resume. Okay, Octave is almost done. And once that's finished, I'll go ahead and just install it. And then we'll add the package for Arduino support as well. So it's going to ask me uh, if I want to install it. Okay, so this is going to also install the Java runtime environment. And I'll go ahead and click Next, Next. And we'll just go ahead and install for all users. And there's the path and it's going to go ahead and install and I'll pause it again and then resume when it finishes. Okay, it's just finishing up the installation. It's running a post install script and it says this may take a little while just to be able to finish up. The next thing we're going to do is go ahead and launch Octave and then have a command to be able to install a package. And this package is going to be called the Arduino package, and it's from the Forge repository. Okay, so it's all done, and I'll go ahead and just run Octave. Now, the nice thing about Octave is it's mostly compatible with MATLAB. There are a few differences, but you can run it in traditional mode. Okay, and I'll just go ahead and click Next and Finish. All right, and I'll go ahead and minimize this. Let me make this just a little bit bigger so we can see the command window, the directory here, and the workspace. So in the command window, now I want to do pkg for package, install, and then from the forge repository, we'll install Arduino. This will go out and get the necessary things for the Arduino package. The other thing, just while this is installing, the other thing that you're going to need is uh, the Arduino IDE. Okay, so that's just, uh, you can download that if you just search for it. I'll just search for it here, show you the link. Okay, so here is software, and you'll need to just get uh, this. I like to download the uh, installer, the local installer. You can also get an app as well, or there's some other options. Okay, I've already installed this. All right, the next thing that you'll need to do is, uh, you know, once you have this, you're going to need to um, just do a couple things. We're going to uh, go ahead and install. We're going to do an Arduino uh, setup, but this isn't going to exist until we import okay we got to import the package to be able to use it so um, I'm going to do pkg and then load Arduino okay so we have to load it first and then we can find Arduino setup and this is going to launch that Arduino IDE that I showed you and I'll go ahead and allow access and I'll say no, let's not get the newest version. Okay, so here it is, and I've plugged in the temperature control app. This is an Arduino Leonardo, but it also works with Uno and others as well. So I'll just show you the device that we're going to use and test. Okay, so it's this uh, temperature control app at the base is an Arduino Leonardo. And the shield just makes these temperature sensors available allows us to control the LED and then I also have a couple heaters as well. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just upload that to my device. Um, if you need to, you can select uh, the port like Arduino. Here's COM11, it's an Arduino Leonardo, although there are many others that are available there. Okay, so it's gonna compile the sketch and then upload and then it's going to be ready. It has to put this firmware onto the device. 
so that it knows how to communicate uh, with okay how to communicate um, with octave okay so now that's all done and I'll just go ahead and uh, clear the screen just so we can see uh, what's going on here now let's go ahead and just connect to the Arduino I'm just gonna call it a okay a equals Arduino and it's going to connect I'm not gonna put the semicolon after it just so I can see that it connected there's the port there's the board and it has different libraries and available pins so the next thing I'm going to do is uh, just go ahead and see what's on analog zero okay a zero pin all right and uh, what I'll, I'll do on that is just say v1 that's going to be my voltage and I'll do read voltage and that's going to be a for my Arduino and I'm going to look at pin a zero okay so there's my voltage and I have a TMP 36 sensor on there so my temperature is going to be equal to V1 minus 0 0.5 and then I multiply by a hundred so there it is in degrees Celsius so I just read from that pin alright now I'm also going to write to the heater and um, or I could write to the LED either one both of them are going to be pulse width modulation so I'm going to do write PW for pulse width duty and cycle and then I'm going to say a for my Arduino device and I'm going to write to D9 and I'll put that at 0 0.5 so this is between 0 and 1 okay so let's see oh I forgot the M in there pulse width modulation there it is so I just turned on the LED and if I wanted to uh, I could set the heater value as well I could set that to 0 0.6 and turn on the heater alright and then I can read for example another temperature and there's a new temperature I don't actually have the heater power plugged in so it's going to change just a little bit uh, will not heat up alright so if I want to disconnect um, I can do a couple different things but I found that maybe the easiest thing is just to clear the Arduino object name and then it disconnects and then allows me to connect again alright and um, and then we're connected again okay so that's just a brief tutorial on how to set up Octave uh, download it and then just very much like MATLAB Octave and MATLAB actually share the same syntax and um, and then you can connect to the Arduino you can read voltages you can write out pulse width modulation duty cycles uh, or disconnect